Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Freeman. I'm a principal solution consultant with SailPoint. Uh, I've been with the company for about five years and I'm one of the specialists on our data access security platform. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about securing non-employee access to business critical data using a combination of the data access security platform with Identity Security Cloud. Also leveraging some components of non-employee or contractor management, however you may be handling that, and Identity Security Cloud workflows and event triggers. So let's start with talking a little bit about data access security. For those who aren't aware of it, it's our platform that we have that can crawl through things like SharePoint, Teams, OneDrive, and other areas that your business may be storing critical business data. It looks at the permissions, the tree structure, analyzes the data, figures out what's sensitive, what's not sensitive, and then ultimately can attribute that back to the entitlements granting your individual employees and non-employees with access to that data. As we talk about event triggers, today we're going to be specifically looking at the access request dynamic approver. This will ensure that any requests made through the Identity Security Cloud platform are analyzed and assessed using typically an external system, but we're going to be leveraging our workflows today. And then when it comes to workflows, we're going to be talking a little bit about how we can take that external trigger, perform some comparative operators based on the payload that's sent, analyze it, and insert an additional approver if something happens to contain business critical data. So workflows as a whole can do a lot of really powerful, really complicated things, but at its core, they're designed to let you tailor your business process to what you might need. And with that, let's get into some live session. So what we have here on my screen, this is data access security. So data access security, it starts with some dashboards and some different things depending on who you are and what your roles are. As we look at resources, this will actually look at your SharePoint Online, your Teams, your OneDrive, and it'll do things like a permissions analysis. So we have several different views that'll show you permissions in a tree. Uh, if we start expanding things, we can start looking at different groups that may have access to sensitive data, figure out exactly who's who, how that permission trickles down, and leveraging that same permissions view, we can also look at things from a classification perspective. So I could do, for example, uh, looking for internally sensitive documents or looking for patent information. Leveraging our Anywhere Collector, you can also look for things that may be business sensitive as far as PII, credit card information, other sorts of internal data that may be important to your organization. The hierarchy operates inside of data access security of policy objects as kind of the lowest level building block. Those can roll into rules. So maybe you take uh, credit card information and banking information and you roll those into something like, you know, it, internal financials as maybe a rule. And then rules ultimately can roll up into policies. So this is where we would be looking at PCI DSS or EPHI or other sorts of policies that may be important to your business. Now, how does this actually transfer into our, how does this transfer into our identity security cloud? So let me log into our identity now, tenant. And from our Identity Now tenant, as we start looking at the markers, we can see on our entitlements, we're actually going to have different data that's going to show up. So for normal items inside of your entitlement catalog, you'll see just regular details. But for things that are sensitive, oh, and that one is actually a... marker we can see our data access enrichment. So this comes from the data access security platform to provide additional data on which entitlements contain sensitive information. So at this point, the enrichment is happening just by virtue of us crawling, understanding and analyzing the entitlements, understanding what is where, and this becomes something that we can key off of now using search or workflows. So as we look to search, there are some additional queries we can run around data access. So data access .categories internal. The data access uh, keyword becomes available for us to use that'll return all entitlements that have that type of sensitive information. 
We could also wrap this using at access or other sorts of uh, markers using search. So this forms the basis for our workflow. So our workflow is actually going to look at access request dynamic approver. So let me actually go under the admin panel under our event triggers. I have some that are turned on here. Let me actually go into a fresh tenant uh, that doesn't have this defined yet. Let me actually move this one to my other monitor. So if we look at the event triggers here, we'll actually see access request dynamic approver. It gives you the example input schema. It tells you the example input and output, what it's expecting. And when we form a subscription in here, we give it a name. So we'll call this one something like uh, ARDA for Access Request Dynamic Approver, uh, and we'll call this one External Workflow. So this is gonna ask for a description. Uh, we'll just copy and paste. It wants an integration URL, and this is where we would have a workflow. So let me actually open a new tab before I get too far ahead. That way I can kind of work in parallel and shift back and forth for you. So we're going to create a new workflow here and we're gonna use that search. Um, and we're gonna kind of treat this like a cooking demonstration because I have an environment that's all set up and we'll show you it working. So in our workflows, we're actually gonna create a workflow here called Arda External. And this is going to uh, analyze an access request uh, check if the requester is contractor. Check if the requested item is internal only. And if so, uh, insert an additional approver. So as with uh, any of our workflows, you have to define your triggers, your actions, and your operators. So as I'm looking to this, I'm gonna do a few things. So first I'm gonna create a personal access token. So the personal access token is gonna allow us to do some API access. I would give this a scope. So just for sake of ease, we'll do a scopes all. We're gonna copy over our data and let me place this on my other monitor. And now using this, inside of our workflow, we're gonna be able to make an HTTP request back into the system. So we have our uh, API access in system for developer days uh, off to the side for me to use in just a few moments. And back in our workflow builder, we can get started now. So we're gonna start this with an external trigger because ultimately we want our access request to call this. So let me pull up the uh, access request uh, dynamic approver. And here is the URL for that. And let me drop that up here and pull up one other. And we'll walk you through how this gets built out. So access request dynamic approval, um, it is an event trigger that we have in the system. Again, it fires every time an access request is made. So inside of your workflow that you're calling, this may be where you have different decision trees that could also call different workflows. In this case, we're just gonna be doing one workflow today, but know that you could kind of fork this out and build triggers for others. So here we can see an example of what a payload may be that comes across. We can see an example response that it's expecting back. So this is where we would say, let's insert an additional approver or let's insert no approver based on the logic. Because we wanna run this as asynchronous, because it may take a little bit of time to run searches and do some calculation, there's actually some additional information that it's sending and additional information that's required back. So when we have an asynchronous response, we're gonna leverage again, the developer documentation that we have and here we can see an example of the callback URL, um, the response mode, the secret, all of the information that we're gonna need to pass back. Um, we can also see the format of what is going to be coming across. And then simply when we respond back, we need to include the secret as well as the output. 
So with this, as we're looking through our workflow and building this out, we're gonna do a couple things. So first, we're gonna do some data validation. So we're gonna do this by first comparing our strings, and we're gonna figure out if our payload that's coming across on the external trigger, we're gonna figure out if this contains an entitlement. And the reason we're doing this is because today within Identity Security Cloud, the entitlement is what ultimately gets the data access security enrichment. In the future, they're going to be bubbling that up to both access profiles and roles, but today it operates on the entitlement level. So we're gonna first check to see if our payload is for an entitlement. And we're gonna do this by actually looking through the requested items to figure out the type. So going back to our payload, here we can see that when we look at the type, it's gonna denote whether this is an access profile, a role, or an entitlement that was requested. So that's our first step in our workflow, is to determine whether or not it contains an entitlement. So we're gonna operate off of the true tree in this case. And what we're gonna do next is we're actually going to search for our identities. So assuming that it is an entitlement, Next, we're gonna to check to see if this is an HR employee or possibly a contractor. So this is gonna be leveraging our get identities step. So this is gonna be actually get list of identities. And how are we gonna fetch the identities? We're actually gonna do this via search. So we're gonna operate a search query here. And in this case, we're gonna be looking at who it was requested for. So the requested for dot ID in this case, we're gonna do a lookup on this individual ID that's gonna be passed across. And that's going to be ID is $.trigger.requested4.id. And we encapsulate that with quotes. And we also wanna to check to see what identity profile they're coming from. So within the system, there are a variety of different identity profiles. If you're using our non-employee risk management platform, you may have multiple profiles for your vendors, your partners, your non-workforce users. But in this case, we're gonna be keying off of it being an HR identity. So we wanna know if the person requesting is not from our HR source. And again, this is something that we could do just directly through search, if you're trying to, to validate and verify, but we're going to be doing and identity profile dot name and not identity profile name HR, uh, as we only wanna look for folks from our HR source. So at this point, um, we're gonna return that list and that's gonna be returned as an array. And uh, because the request is only made for a single individual, even if you make a request for multiple people, it actually parses them out as separate request IDs. What we're gonna do here is a simple verify data type to see if it exists. So this is a, a common thing we're going to do on a few of our searches. So we're gonna verify the data type here and I'll, I'll go through and let me just rename a couple of these just for housekeeping. So we'll call this one uh, something akin to external trigger, uh, access request dynamic approval. Uh, we'll do a check here. So it's going to check to see is entitlement. This get list of identities is going to actually check to see through search uh, is the requested for uh, a non-employee. And then under verify data type, uh, and we'll just keep good housekeeping going forward, we're going to just check is there a result that was found for this? So leveraging um, our list of identities that is coming across uh, from the previous step, uh, we can actually do identities here. Um, we're gonna actually just say, does it exist? So exists. So after we've verified that we have someone, and again, we'll, we'll operate on the false uh, false path and send back kind of that empty bodied response. Uh, we'll do that part last. Now that we know that we have someone, um, we now need to see was it sensitive information or internal information or some sort of uh, important data. So this is also similar to searching for 
uh, the non-employee. Um, we're going to actually operate another search here using get access. So our action here to get access, this is going to use search query. And we're only going to search for entitlements, as entitlements are the only thing that currently have um, data access categories on here. And here we're going to say data access dot categories is internal and and then this is where we're going to leverage more information on what was requested um, going back to the payload that was sent across uh, we're actually going to look at the requested items uh, id uh, and that will come across as such so this will be and sorry i've got another window up that i am cycling through going to be and, and then we have to encapsulate it in quotes, dollar dot trigger as it's sent across as part of the payload dot requested items zero uh, because there is only a single item for every uh, request dot ID brace brace and end quotes. So this is going to be looking at the first item which is also the only item um, that is part of the request and let's go ahead and rename this uh, piece as well. Let's call this one search since we're searching the same as uh, before and this is going to be searching for the uh, entitlement uh, as uh, internal classification. So based on this uh, again common theme we're going to be checking to see if we have results found in our array um, because the get access will return an array of items. Let me uncheck access profiles and roles. Didn't seem to take the first time. Um, this is where we're going to be using verify data type to determine did we have results, right? Check for results classification. So this is where we're going to be doing a get access access items so using our uh, GUI we can just kind of click our way through and we're just trying to see does this exist um, did I have results in my array now we're getting to the point where we have to do something right so we've built out uh, kind of a decision tree where now if I'm dragging this off to the side we should see three false trees that should send back a, res a response in the body that has really no uh, important content. And then on the right hand side, this is where we would actually um, perform an insertion to add an additional governance group to our approvers. So from an action perspective, we have some HTTP requests, um, specifically two of them we'll need to make. The first one we're going to make, and it's going to uh, reorganize things as I go. Uh, we're going to link it three times uh, because all three of these paths should effectively send back a uh, body with no additional approver. And then on our right hand side, we're also going to be doing an HTTP request, uh, but this one will add the approver. And then both of these are going to end successfully. And we could obviously analyze the uh, HTTP response code, make sure we get back a 200, if so, end success, if not, end failure. Uh, but in this case, we're going to end both of these as a success. So the last piece that we have in here is to send empty response. And then this is going to send additional gov group. So for this, we're going to be using the personal access token that was previously generated. Um, and then we're going to be able to do some testing. Uh, after we do this, we'll actually configure the access request dynamic approval to trigger this workflow. So in here, we're going to be using an OAuth2 client. Uh, our token URL in this case is going to be related to our uh, tenant. So there's a uh, standard um, OAuth uh, URL for every tenant. 
We're gonna be plugging in our client ID and secret here, which let me copy these across from my clipboard. These are the personal access token values that we previously had generated. Credential location, we're gonna select header. Our request URL, this is something that, unfortunately we're gonna to have to kind of, um, well actually not unfortunate. This is something where we're just gonna directly uh, choose variable and this is gonna be in our header. So as part of an asynchronous response, you'll notice the callback URL, it's the first value in the metadata. Um, so we're gonna actually leverage the callback URL from access request to know where to send this. Sorry, there was a piece in here. Uh, method we're gonna do is a post, as we can see that this asks for a uh, post back as asynchronous. It's a JSON response. And then in the body, this is where we would send back that, I'll close this one just so I can stop tabbing back. This is where we're going to send back this format. So the secret is gonna actually come from the um, trigger metadata secret. Um, and then it's gonna be empty for no response. So just to show what that might look like, uh, let me open up a window and plug this in as JSON and dollar output. So I'm formatting this live uh, just to make sure I have the right item for you all. It's gonna be our ID, uh, our output is here. Our ID is the first value, our name is the second value, type is the third value. We close our JSON, and then after this we send our secret, which is gonna come directly from the trigger. So this is what we're going to be plugging into our empty response. So going back to our HTTP action, um, we'll plug that in right here. And this is what we're sending across in the body for no response. And then if we wanna add a governance group, um, what we need to do based on um, adding either an identity or a governance group is we need to actually have the ID of it. So for this, we would go to our identities governance group, we would fetch the ID of our sensitive data approvers, uh, and we would insert that here. And I have that already done off to the side, uh, but effectively we're doing the same piece. So our OAuth, and then we're gonna have our client ID and secret, and let me actually drag that back to this monitor so y'all can't see it. So client ID and secret. The token URL is gonna remain the same. Location is still header. The request URL is still going to be the trigger metadata callback URL. And then the post JSON body is going to be as follows. And I'll just paste this into my window and format it up so you can see. Um, there's an ID for my governance group. There's my name for it. You can see the type is a governance group. And then the secret is still coming from that um, trigger value for metadata secret. So this is effectively our completed workflow with one exception. Um, the exception here is that we need to uh, first save it. So let me hit save on this. Um, we need to generate an access token. And the reason we need to do this is because our um, access request dynamic approver event trigger, that needs to actually call this. So this is where we're going to, again, in a similar fashion off to the side, uh, copy over um, our client ID our secret and uh, we also have the ability to generate our OAuth token here using curl. Let me put a replace um, since I'm on Windows and what we're going to do is issue this curl command. And this is actually gonna give us our access token we're gonna to use as our workflow. So I've stored that off to the side and this is now good to go. So in here, 
Um, really, again, there's um, no additional change that's needed on this end. Um, the last piece is for us to actually build out that subscription. So here we're going to go to our Access Request Dynamic Approver and we're going to set a subscription. Here we'll call this one Ardo Workflow. We'll give it a description. Uh, executes uh, analysis to determine if sensitive data, if so, new approver, if not, no approver uh, added. Our integration URL, this is where we'll actually um, plug in our workflow URL that was provided when we generated that token. So I'll just paste that across. It is an asynchronous response, meaning we are uh, not at as much of a time constraint. It doesn't need something immediately, uh, but that doesn't mean we need to provide a deadline. So in this case, uh, I'm gonna give it two minutes to respond back. That way, if there are more complicated um, computations and searches and other things that may be ran um, as a part of it, we have a little bit of time buffer um, to give back a response. This is where we're going to use bearer token and that curl command that I had just ran and the bearer token. I'm gonna to go ahead and paste that in. Save this and we should be good to go. So now if I look at our subscriptions, this workflow is on. I'm sorry, the event trigger is on. If I look at my workflows, this is not currently on, um, but I would go ahead and turn this on and then it'll be ready to run. Um, so as I had mentioned, I had built this in a uh, separate environment ready to fire. Let me show you uh, what that looks like with everything stitched up and ready to go. So here we have our um, workflow that I have a copy of. I'm going to go edit and builder just so I can show you the tests uh, on this. Uh, and again, there are really four different um, scenarios and four different tests that this would run under. So the first scenario I have, um, it's not an entitlement, right? So this is somebody requesting an access profile. And again, based on the logic that we have, this check entitlement step near the top, um, this will actually fork to the left and it'll do an HTTP response. Um, in this case, the event trigger didn't actually fire, I'm just in test. So it will um, cause a little bit of an error down here on the HTTP response, but not a problem. We can see it's forking left as expected. Here we have a second example where, okay, well, it was an entitlement, but this is for an employee, right? Aaron Nichols happens to be an employee in my organization. So running that same test, but actually having Aaron be the requester, uh, I'm sorry, requested for, um, we'll see it's gonna hit this first box, search. We're gonna see that it's gonna actually fork left down this uh, second false tree that we have here. So we're gonna do the analysis and we're gonna wind up down at the same box. We're gonna start another test. In this scenario, it's gonna be a request, um, but it's, it's gonna actually be uh, a couple things. So Brad Harrington is a contractor. So we changed this here, but it's not sensitive. So it's going to fork off of this uh, down here, showing that it, it made it down to the check for entitlement classified, and then it forked off to the left. And again, this is our, our third scenario where it was a contractor, but not sensitive, was an entitlement. We can see it forked to the left. And then finally, uh, we actually have our contractor with sensitive data. So this is the, uh, the, the meme of the day. It's the uh, industrial grade glycine um, that's being requested. So it's a sensitive asset within our environment for a contractor and we can actually see that it is going to fork to the right. So in this case, it would insert an additional approver. So from a testing perspective, before we would actually go live with everything, we would make sure that everything is properly going down the correct trees. And then the last piece that we have is to try it for real. So this is an actual workflow that is turned on in my environment. This is just a copy you can see I'm working on. And what we're gonna do for this is we're actually gonna sign out we're gonna sign back in as someone, in this case, Kelly Snow. Kelly's gonna make a request for someone else. We're gonna make a request for Brad. Brad is our contractor in this scenario. 
and we're going to make a request for both a sensitive entitlement as well as one that is not, and that would conclude our demonstration. So here I'm adding academic, and I'm also adding some of these uh, Donghua Jilong uh, glycine entitlements, which are sensitive. We can see the request that's being made. It'll take just a moment for it to run, but if we go to the My Requests area, uh, I have a couple that are canceled as I was running these a little earlier, but we'll actually see that it's gonna analyze during this step. This is where it's doing the access request dynamic approval. And we'll refresh the page. And ultimately we'll see that it's going to add our additional sensitive approvals group. It has two minutes to do that, but I may not have two minutes left on my session. We'll, we'll, we'll rely on this uh, F5 key pretty heavily in the next couple seconds. And there it is. So here we can see that we have our uh, normal approval um, that is me, the source owner for the system. Uh, and then there's that sensitive data approvers that we inserted as part of our workflow. Um, as far as the academic one, I may have it pending from a, another user, but um, the academic one, it's, it's only the source owner. So uh, let me switch back over to um, my slides. I'm gonna show you a couple quick references. Um, just for, uh, that's, that's not my slide, that's, that's Jordan Violet, it looks like on the screen. Um, here we have a couple things for folks uh, keeping track a, a, at home. Uh, feel free to take a screenshot. A um, couple references on both the event triggers and workflow side, as well as data access security. Uh, hopefully this session was valuable and encourages folks to look a little deeper into how data is classified, the policies that may handle the assignment, and then ultimately things like requests in order to insert more approvers for sensitive things. So that's my time. Thanks so much. Thank you.